Hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellist series, we will highlight the oldest Black businesses in America. Welcome to Black Excellist. This is where we celebrate Black excellence, achievement, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Black businesses are rich in history. From newspapers to banks to restaurants and more, Black-owned businesses are an integral part of American life. Today, Black men and women own 2.6 million businesses across the United States, roughly 9.5% of businesses in the country. But which ones have endured the longest? Join us on a captivating journey through time as we unveil the untold stories of resilience, innovation, and perseverance. In today's Black Excellist exclusive, we explore the oldest Black-owned businesses in America while uncovering the remarkable legacies and enduring spirit that have made these establishments a vital thread in the fabric of our nation's history. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, Philadelphia Tribune. Founded in 1884, founded by Christopher James Perry in 1884 at just 28 years old, the Philadelphia Tribune began as the Weekly Tribune, a one-page effort spotlighting African-American interests in Philadelphia. Starting from a one-man operation, Perry's newspaper gave a much-needed voice to an underrepresented community. Evolving from sales to reporting, Perry's labor bore fruit, aiding employment during the Great Depression and exposing racism in New Deal policies. Today, the Philadelphia Tribune stands as a respected news source and a multimedia storyteller representing the African-American experience. Number two, E.E. E. Ward Moving and Storage, founded in 1881. Before the Civil War, John T. Ward helped slaves escape to freedom through his role as a conductor on the Underground Railroad. His home in Columbus, Ohio, the Ward House, was known as one of the main pit stops on the historic path to freedom. In 1881, John and his son founded a wagon transportation business operating in downtown Columbus with just two horses and a wagon. The company has persisted for more than 140 years, and today it operates three different locations. By 2019, E.E. E. Ward in Columbus was averaging over $5 million annually, employing over 50 full-time workers, focusing on residential and business moving and storage. In 2003, the U.S. Department of Commerce recognized E.E. E. Ward as the oldest African-American-owned business in America. Number three, Afro News, founded in 1892. The Baltimore Afro-American, commonly known as the Afro or Afro News, is a weekly African-American newspaper published in Baltimore, Maryland. It is the flagship newspaper of the Afro-American chain and the longest-running African-American family-owned newspaper in the United States. The Afro-American rose to national prominence while under the editorial control of Carl Murphy, who served as its editor-publisher for 45 years. The paper's influence continues to shape the political social order and provide a medium for citizens to voice their opinions. Number four. McKissack and McKissack. Founded in 1905, Moses McKissack and his brother, Calvin, are the grandsons of a slave who would go on to start their own architecture firm. The company made history in 1942 when the U.S. awarded it a $5.7 million contract to build an airbase in Tuskegee, Alabama, the largest federal contract given to a Black-owned business. McKissack and McKissack recently celebrated its 100th anniversary of their founders becoming one of the first Black American licensed architects. Today, the company continues to construct new buildings for airports, universities, museums, hospitals, and more. Number 5. Chicago Defender. Founded in 1905, Robert Sengstock Abbott founded the Chicago Defender at the age of 34. Born to freedmen parents in Georgia in 1870, Abbott moved to Chicago and then earned a law degree from the Chicago-Kent College of Law in 1898. In 1905, Abbott started the Chicago Defender in his kitchen with an initial investment of 25 cents. 
Within just five years, it expanded its reach beyond Chicago and became the most popular black weekly newspaper in the country. Today, the digital-only Chicago Defender is owned by Real Times Media, a company that also owns other black newspapers throughout the country. Number 6. Atlanta Life Insurance Founded in 1905, Alonzo Herndon, the founder, was born into slavery in Georgia in 1858 and freed after the Civil War. At the age of 20, he set out on his own with just $11, working as a farmhand and learning barbering. He opened his first barber shop in Jonesboro, Georgia, then moved to Atlanta in 1882, where he opened three upscale barber shops. As he accumulated wealth, he purchased real estate, becoming the first black millionaire in Atlanta. In 1905, Herndon purchased a burial association and two other insurance companies, which he then merged into Atlanta Life Insurance Company. Atlanta Life Insurance was a key financial institution during the Jim Crow and pre-civil rights era, offering low-cost insurance to black Americans. Number 7. Mechanics and Farmers Bank Founded in 1907, entrepreneur John Merrick, a former slave, founded Mechanics and Farmers Bank after establishing another long-running, minority-owned company in North Carolina, Mutual. In 1907, Merrick and six other men established this bank on Black Wall Street, a four-block district of Black-owned businesses in Durham that thrived during the Jim Crow era. By 2019, the bank had over $262 million in total assets. Number 8. R.S. Lewis & Sons Funeral Home Founded in 1914, this funeral home is part of a special and tragic piece of American and civil rights history. Upon Dr. King's assassination, Coretta Scott King trusted R.S. Lewis & Sons with the preparation of Dr. King's body for the memorial service. Their team worked diligently and meticulously for 13 hours straight to ensure that the slain civil rights icon was in the best condition possible. The company is not only a trailblazer on the business front, but they have also become known for their civic leadership in the city of Memphis. Number 9. Citizen Trust Bank, founded in 1921. In the late 1910s, Heman Perry went into a shop to be fitted for a pair of socks and was refused because he was black. This led to him and four other black men, known as the Fervent Five, to form a bank so black people could find financing for their own shops. In 1921, the Fervent Five opened Citizens Trust Bank with $500,000 in capital stock. In 1948, Citizens Trust Bank was the first black-owned bank to join the Federal Reserve Bank. Today, it owns a whopping $429 million in assets. Number 10. The Parker House Sausage Company Founded in 1926, the Parker House Sausage Company is one of the oldest Black-owned, continually operating family businesses in the country. It started small, with Judge H. Parker, who moved from Tennessee to Chicago, selling sausage links from a horse and carriage in 1919. In 1921, Parker bought a plant and some refrigerated trucks, and in 1926, he bought a new headquarters on South State Street in Chicago, where it remains even today. The business sells several different kinds of sausages that can be found at big box stores like Sam's Club and Walmart. Number 11. Chicken Shack Founded in 1935 Chicken Shack started as an ice cream shop in 1935, but founder Tommy Delpit switched business plans and created Chicken Shack two years later. His son, Joe, took over the business at 18 and later became the first black person to sit on Baton Rouge's city council in 1968, where he remained in office for 16 years. Today, Chicken Shack is a mini franchise with three locations in Baton Rouge. Number 12. Omaha Star Founded in 1938, the Omaha Star is the nation's first black female-founded and run newspaper. Under the banner Joy and Happiness, 
the Omaha Star has focused on bringing positive, progressive news to the African-American community in Omaha since it was founded by Mildred Brown. Her reporting on the civil rights movement even earned praise from then-President Lyndon Johnson. Today, the newspaper is distributed to 48 states and has never missed a single issue. Number 13. Dookie Chase. Founded in 1941, Dookie Chase Restaurant is one of the most famous restaurants in New Orleans, renowned for its Creole cuisine and its late owner, Leah Lang Chase. The restaurant was founded by her husband's parents, Emily and Dookie Chase Sr., as a bar and sandwich shop in the Trem. Leah would transform the restaurant into a fine dining restaurant, helping her earn the nickname Queen of Creole Cooking. Leah worked at the restaurant until her death in 2019, at the age of 96. But the restaurant is still operated today by members of the Chase family. Number 14. Ebony Magazine. Founded in 1945. In 1942, John Harold Johnson published a magazine that he intended to be akin to the Reader's Digest for Black people. He was only 24 years old, but was able to lead the operation to a monthly circulation of 50,000. Seeing this success, Johnson founded Ebony, a black lifestyle magazine, in 1945. Johnson envisioned Ebony as a news and photo magazine patterned much after Life magazine, but specifically designed for African-American readers. By the beginning of the 21st century, Ebony's circulation had reached almost 2 million and helped spawn Johnson's sister magazine called Jet. Number 15. Four-Way Restaurant. Founded in 1946. One of the oldest restaurants in Memphis, this restaurant was established by Irene Cleves and her husband, Clint. This soul food eatery is located in the neighborhood of Soulsville, near downtown, and during segregation, it was a safe haven for many of the civil rights leaders. Icons like Dr. King and Jesse Jackson frequented the restaurant as it served as a meeting place. Additionally, music legends like B.B. King and Aretha Franklin have eaten here. Four Way has grown a lot over the years, progressing from a little kitchen in the corner of a pool hall to a full-fledged restaurant. Number 16. Carver Federal Savings Bank, founded in 1948. Carver Federal Savings Bank opened under the leadership of Moran Weston in 1948. Weston already had earlier experience as the founder of a credit union. The bank applied for a federal charter after the state had denied it a charter and opened in a simple storefront. Carver Federal Savings Bank is now focused on helping black homeowners obtain first mortgages and today, it's the largest and oldest continually Black-operated U.S. bank. Number 17. KPRS. Founded in 1950, KPRS, the first African-American-owned radio station west of the Mississippi, was founded by Andrew Skip Carter in Kansas City. Struggling against racial barriers, Carter, an FCC-licensed engineer since 1947, realized his dream of a station featuring Black artists. Today, this urban contemporary radio hub plays hip-hop, R&B, and gospel music. Recognized by the FCC as the oldest continually African-American family-owned radio station, KPRS has excelled since 2012. Today, it ranks among Kansas City's top three stations and holds a strong position among the highest-rated urban-formatted stations in the nation. Number 18. H.J. Russell & Company Founded in 1952 H.J. Russell & Company, founded by Herman J. Russell, originated from humble beginnings where he learned handyman skills while working for his father's plastering business. After graduating from Tuskegee University in 1952, he started his own plastering company, which evolved into a multifaceted enterprise. The company has since grown into one of the largest African-American-owned construction companies with extensive experience in building and renovating airports, entertainment venues, sports facilities, cultural, retail, office, higher education, multifamily residential, and institutional facilities. Number 19. Dean's Beauty Salon and Barbershop. 
founded in 1956. Established by husband and wife Benjamin and Mary Rose Dean in 1956, this barbershop and beauty salon is one of the oldest continuously operating Black-owned shops in the country. The salon has experienced successive changes to the surrounding community, changes to the urban fabric of Portland, and changes in Black hair care and styling trends. After the couple transitioned, the operation of the salon was transferred to the couple's daughter, Gloria Ella Timms. The beauty salon and barbershop was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 2022 due to its connection with African-American business in the aftermath of the Second World War. Number 20. Ben's Chili Bowl Founded in 1958, for 62 years, Ben's Chili Bowl has drawn celebrities, locals, and tourists, offering authentic flavors, a family-friendly vibe, and a rich history. Started by Ben Ali and Virginia Rollins in a former movie house on U Street, Washington, D.C. in 1958, it endured tumultuous times. The restaurant survived the civic unrest of 1968 race riots, endured the challenges of the surrounding area falling into decline during the 1980s, and weathered the storm with the passing of its namesake in 2009. Ben's legacy lives on through his wife, Virginia, who visits daily at the age of 90, while her sons manage the business. Number 21. Marcus Books, founded in 1960. Originally opened in San Francisco, Marcus Books is the oldest black bookstore in America. In 1975, the owners established an Oakland location, which is still thriving today despite many obstacles. With a core mission to foster celebration and education about Black culture globally, it serves as an inclusive haven resonating with the diverse spectrum of Black identities. Marking its 60th year, the store proudly curates a vital collection spanning children's literature, classics, bestsellers, cookbooks, history, poetry, biographies, and graphic novels a testament to its commitment to enriching minds and honoring the multifaceted narratives of Black lives. Number 22. Sylvia's Restaurant Founded in 1962. Sylvia's Restaurant, an iconic Harlem establishment, has served soul food for 60 years since founder Sylvia Woods purchased the restaurant with $20,000 in 1962. The restaurant's legacy as a hub for politicians, musicians, and locals is a testament to Sylvia's nurturing of both food and community. The restaurant has been the go-to destination for politicians, athletes, musicians, Harlemites, and tourists alike, with Sylvia becoming a celebrated figure of New York City and nicknamed the Queen of Soul Food. Number 23. One United Bank Founded in 1968, One United Bank, the nation's largest Black-owned bank, has a rich legacy with roots dating back to 1968, with the founding of Boston-based Unity Bank and Trust. Established by a Black graduate of Harvard Business School, the bank had a mission to serve the Black community. Today, One United Bank is the result of unifying several community banks across the country. It is flourishing currently holding assets totaling approximately $660 million. Its founder's vision fuels an unwavering dedication to bridging economic gaps and promoting financial literacy among Black individuals and businesses. Number 24. Dorsey's Art Gallery, founded in 1970. Dorsey's Art Gallery stands as the oldest Black-owned art gallery in New York City. Founded by Lawrence Peter Dorsey, an adept framer mentored by an elder in art framing, he acquired the gallery in 1970. With a zeal for amplifying new artists of color, Dorsey aimed to integrate art within the community. Through commissioning masterful artworks like paintings and murals, Dorsey contributed to institutions like the Brooklyn Children's Center and Kings County Hospital. His mission rendered Black art inclusive, fostering a hub for artists and collectors. Number 25. Black Enterprise. Founded in 1970. 
Black Enterprise was birthed out of the mission to serve as a business magazine for the Black community. Its inception was the brainchild of Earl G. Graves Sr., a visionary entrepreneur who led the company through an illustrious five-decade journey. The publication has consistently emerged as a premier fount of wisdom for entrepreneurship and small business pursuits. Today, Black Enterprise stands as a multifaceted, multimedia enterprise, encompassing print and digital magazine editions, complemented by compelling television programming. While founder Earl Graves Sr. bid farewell in 2020 at 85, his enduring legacy lives on through the adept guidance of his son and successor, Earl Graves Jr. We appreciate the fact that you stayed until the end. Thank you for spending time with us, and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.